Hello and welcome to another episode of The Wannabe Entrepreneur, the podcast about what's really like to bootstrap a company. My name is Tiago, I'm your host, and today I have a very packed episode for you. I want to speak about multiple topics, including project updates, like always, and I have some great news for you, some interesting things happening. It seems that my marketing strategies for the W space are actually working, and how that <laughs> makes me feel, you know, there's always a component of the lifestyle of the entrepreneur where I share a little bit what's going on in my mind and in my life another important thing that is happening is that from now on i don't have any unemployment money so i'm strictly living out of my savings and uh, yeah how does this make me feel and what is going through my mind uh, what i'm thinking so a lot of this kind of updates and uh, i also want to share a little bit about what i'm still learning from nfts because i have some friends over and they are like completely addicted to nfts and it's really interesting how they operate and what they do in a daily basis so i want to share that with you i think it's also really interesting and uh, i think that's also similar to what we do on twitter as bootstrapper so stay put because i think you'll find this really really cool so yeah that's what i have uh, for you today I'm, I'm still kind of figuring out what I will be speaking in the tips and tricks for entrepreneurs because I'm recording this as uh, as it comes to my mind, actually. So, yeah, let's see. I don't have anything planned for the tips and tricks, but I'm sure we'll find something really interesting to talk about. And uh, without further ado, let's get started with this episode. But first, I have here my coffee. Cheers. <sighs> Delicious. Let's get started. Even though I don't fully agree, I think a lot of people in my life might consider me a little bit stubborn. Like, I have uh, very fixed ideas. And that can be a gift and a curse. If you are an entrepreneur, you need to really fight for your ideas. And it's kind of a necessity, otherwise you end up quitting. But sometimes it might be a little bit annoying, especially when my mom was telling me what to do and I always said no. She got a little bit frustrated. So I think that, yes, I'm, I might be a bit uh, stubborn, but I also like to believe that I have an open mind, especially when I started traveling and meeting people from other cultures, living in different circumstances, circumstances, <laughs> circumstances. I, I think that uh, I learned that just because people do things differently, it doesn't mean they are wrong. So... I always try to get both faces of the coin before making up my mind. But I also like to make up my mind and have a decision. I don't like when people just cannot make decisions. And that happens a lot, especially if you travel and you start to understand that uh, things are not just black and white, that there are multiple possibilities. Sometimes it's hard for you to take a stand, make a decision. But I always like and try to do that. I listen to both parties and then I try to make the best decision possible with my knowledge. And I think that it doesn't mean that I won't change it in the future. I can, but at least at that moment, I have uh, my decision. And it's really interesting to see when you have friends and people that uh, are from your bubble and they just think in a completely different way. And you can see that... For instance, a lot when you are voting, when there are elections. We just had elections recently here in Portugal. And I was speaking, obviously, with my friends, with my family. And it's interesting to see how topics that for you are crystal clear, that you made a stand. People have a completely different idea. Why is that? Is this why there's always wars? Because there's people with opposite ideas? Is there right or wrong, actually? Now, we're getting a little bit too philosophical. But uh, one of the opinions I've been sharing here with my friends, because I, as I told you, I have friends over and this is a perfect opportunity to discuss all of my thoughts and philosophies and see if they see eye to eye or not. And I, I love to have people with different opinions because that's how you grow. That's how you learn. And the first thing that we were discussing was uh, patriotism and uh, more specifically now with what's happening in Ukraine and uh, with Russia as well, this invasion that is happening. Because 
I ask my friends, would you fight for your country? Would you just stay and fight? Or would you basically run away and live your life in a different country? And I, I want to just to, to give this uh, question as well to you uh, for you to think about it. But I also want to give you a little bit the context, right? So imagine you are a developer like myself and you can work from anywhere in the world. You can make a good salary and you can basically resume your life in any country. Of course, it, you will miss your country. You'll miss maybe speaking your language, but at least... You, you can just continue living, you can make a paycheck, and uh, you can provide for your family. If you were living in this context, with these circumstances, would you stay in your uh, country to fight if you're being invaded, like it's happening to Ukraine, or would you run away? And uh, this is a very interesting question, because for me, the first thing I thought is like, I'm, I'm really selfish, I, I don't want to die, so I would just uh, probably run away, I would just as long as, of course, my family was safe and I could at least bring them with me, with me, I would just run away and resume my life in another country. Because, to be honest, I've done this before, right? I was living in Germany for six years. Of course, I missed the country. Of course, I missed the language and the weather. But uh, I'm, I think I think it's something that between that or being in a war, I would prefer moving out. But some of my friends think otherwise. They would say, no, it's my country. I want to fight. I want to stay. And I want to make sure I protect my land, my, my country, because they, they identify themselves a lot with their country. And this really made me think, because they are my friends. We share the same values. Does it mean that I'm a coward, that I'll just run away? Does it mean that I'm not a patriotist and I don't care too much about my country? Because then I start thinking about my country as well and I have some nostalgia about it. I, I like it. I, I love to watch the national team, for instance, and I wanted to win and everything. So I don't know. This is one of these uh, situations where I'm still not sure if I would definitely run or not. But uh, again, for me, in the beginning at least, when I started to think about it, it was crystal clear. I, I just wanted to leave and, and to protect me and, and my family. But uh, especially being so unfair, such a, when, when you think that there's no chances you can win. I don't know. I think maybe this tells a lot about my personality. But uh, yeah, this is one of these dilemmas that has been uh, happening. And one more recently that just happened actually yesterday, you probably know about it, what happen in the Oscars. I, I don't follow the Oscars that much, or at all, actually. There's people that really stay late at night here in, in Europe because, you know, the Oscars happen really late here in Europe, and the people just stay late at night and watch the Oscars, and they really follow everything that is happening, and they watch all the movies, and they love the drama, and all of that. I, I don't care about that too much. But yesterday, I mean, there's a line, right? When someone gets up and slaps the host in national television, it's absolutely ridiculous for me. And I thought this was obvious. I was asking around my friends, and again, I was surprised. There were people close to me that said, no, it was okay, this this uh, joke was too much, was uh, joking about the disease, so you should not do that. So Will Smith was right to basically slap Chris in national TV television. For me, I just don't understand. How can we be friends and have so different opinions? It's... Uh, it's really, I mean, I, I don't judge at all. I think it's really interesting and I think everyone should have their own opinions. But it makes me think, okay, is there something that I'm missing? Is there something that I I don't see? Um, for me, it's completely unacceptable. So I created a tweet, uh, a survey. It was actually my best, best or my most answered survey on Twitter. Obviously, because if we think about what I've been uh, kind of learning around the virality and being viral, you always need to take a ride from a topic that everyone is already speaking about. So everyone is speaking about Will Smith slapping this guy. So yeah, if I take a ride on that, a lot of people will be interested. So I did a survey and it's very simple. I just ask, was Will Smith right in slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars? Yes or no? This got 43 votes. Which, I mean, is still not significant and we are still inside my bubble, but it's quite interesting. So, I shared this uh, survey and in the beginning, everyone was voting no. He was not right. 
and no one was voting yes. And I thought, this is interesting because I, I know people around me, multiple people, that uh, kind of thought that he was right. So why is that no one is voting? So answering to that tweet, I just wrote, the survey is anonymous, by the way. Because that's also what I feel it happens sometimes. People are a little bit afraid to tell when they have an opposite opinion because they are afraid to be judged. So I said, this is anonymous. I don't know if this was related or not, because I basically said that maybe 10 minutes after, there were already maybe 10 to 15 votes, but and all of them were no. But from then on, people started also voting yes. So, so far, we have 69.8. So about 70% people think he was not right. Will Smith was not right in slapping Chris Rock. And 30% think that he was right. Interesting, right? I mean, 30% is still a big uh, portion of the population. And it makes me think, is this why people are so divided? Is this why there's wars? Is this why Trump wins sometimes and then, you know, Democrats win? And, and there's kind of this polarity in our society because people just don't see eye to eye in things that for me are crystal clear, right? Violence is a big no-no. But some people think, well, sometimes violence can be accept acceptable. Anyways, the world, humans are very complex. It's uh, really hard to get one uh, universal truth. And the same with the entrepreneurship. Eh? Did you see this bridge, amazing bridge that I did here? Like two completely unrelated topics that now are binded together by this amazing comparison that I just did. <laughs> Entrepreneurship is also very complex. There's so many variables. And uh, this uh, past week, of course, I'd also been a bit distracted with my friends being here. But uh, I really don't know what to do. This happens to me quite often, where I just don't know what should be the next steps. There's so many things that you can do. And you can ask multiple entrepreneurs. All of them will give you different answers. I am now reaching to the point that... Uh, I am starting again to burn my savings. So if you are an old listener, you might already know this, but if not, here it is. When I quit my job in Germany for the first three months, I didn't have any unemployment money. But after that, I could get help or support from the German state, basically the unemployment money. And I've been getting that until uh, this month, until March. This is the last month that I'm getting this amazing support. It's been amazing, I have to say. This doesn't happen in uh, Portugal, for instance. When you quit your job yourself in uh, Portugal, you don't get any unemployment money. But in Germany, you do. And this is great for entrepreneurs, bootstrappers. I have a lot of friends that are also entrepreneurs, and they basically did the same. After working for a company for several years, they decided to quit their jobs and uh, to basically... Germany, it's kind of an investment of the state, right? So they invest or the state invests in these entrepreneurs to try to put up their projects. But now that's it. I'm done. There's nothing else. There's no income stream besides my projects today. Or actually yesterday I got my salary <laughs> from the community. I, I made it so that uh, Stripe only pays me once a month, like everything together for two main reasons. First of all, it looks like a salary. And second, I think it basically affects the fees. So I have less fees if I receive everything at once. And I got an amazing 130 euros. So yeah, still very far from paying the bills. And now I am in this crossroads. I'm thinking, should I try to get a job or should I burn my savings? In one hand, I still have savings that will last me for maybe six other months, which is nice. But uh, in the other hand, I don't want to burn them, right? Because it's always nice to have some money on the side so that maybe I can buy a house, invest, do something like that. So I'm thinking a lot of people tell me that I should um, find a job or at least a part-time. I just don't want to. I'm scared about it. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm becoming unemployable. And if you are a bootstrapper, or at least if you are a full-time bootstrapper like me, you probably have already heard these words, to be unemployable. So this means that you cannot work for someone else ever again, because you're just too used to do your own thing and make your own schedule. So yeah, I'm scared that I'm becoming unemployable, that I, I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't 
last long working for someone else. So maybe the option would be then freelancing. But then again, I love to be part of a team. And if I'm working for someone else, then I would also like to be part of the team. You know, it's I really don't know what to do in that regard. So I I kind of put it under the carpet and I ignore it and I keep on pushing, trying to get my community to run. But this won't last forever for sure. So this was the entrepreneur lifestyle. And now it's time to take this and uh, continue in the project updates because I think it's it's very much connected. And I want to tell you how the community is growing. For the past uh, two, three weeks, I, I've seen a growth. I've seen uh, more people joining the community. I've seen also more people listening to the podcast, which is nice. So according to Red Circle, which is the platform I used to host my podcast, I have now an average of 113 listeners per episode, which is great. I can really see an increase. This didn't happen before. I kind of stagnated for a while, but I don't know. Now it seems that is raising, which is really nice. I also see a lot of you tweeting about the episodes, tweeting about the community, and that that really puts a smile on my face. I, I really love that. So thank you so much for that support. That definitely helps me create a brand and awareness around uh, the my products and around my podcast. And I have already some proofs that this is working. Now, I'll tell you in, right away. For example, I was just, uh, I think I told you, yeah, I told you this already in, in the podcast, that I was reading a post on Indie Hackers about communities and uh, or about actually entrepreneur loneliness. And someone mentioned the wannabe entrepreneur as one of the options to somehow fight the loneliness as a bootstrapper. And I was super happy because I don't even know this person. And what Indie Hackers does is that they pick up the stories, the posts that got the most engagement, and then they share those in the newsletter. And they did share that post in the newsletter. So this means they shared the wannabe entrepreneur in their newsletter, in the Indie Hackers newsletter. And this is great. I, I saw a couple of people coming from the newsletter. Not a lot, but I think around 20 people came from the newsletter to check out the website. And at least one of them converted to a member. So not bad. I can already see people speaking about it. And since I'm super active on Indie Hackers, sometimes I mention the WB space. And a lot of people say, yeah, I knew about it already already. So I think that I'm finally creating a buzz around uh, the bootstrappers community. People know the wannabe entrepreneur podcast. For instance, I, I just interviewed um, Anna, Anna Bibikova, and the interview will be live this coming Thursday. And when I asked her to be a guest on the podcast, she said, uh, finally, I got invited to be in the wannabe entrepreneur. So this is really nice. It somehow validates that my branding is working, that I'm able to establish myself in this community. And uh, I can tell you that for me, this has been a lot of consistency, always been in the top of the mind. As if you remember the interview I had uh, with uh, Jakob Greenfeld, that's exactly what he said, that if you basically post constantly, people will remember you and you'll be the first one. When someone asks them about a podcast, for instance, you'll be in the top of their mind. So this is really great. And of course, keep on trying new things and keep on growing. So I see some growth. It's not that exponential growth that uh, you sometimes see in these gro growth curves that uh, you, I always envy. But maybe it will happen. I don't know. Keep, I will keep you posted uh, in that. Besides that, in the community, I've been working in the accelerator. I, I think I've told you about this before. I have this idea of uh, creating an accelerated program or a bootstrap accelerated program. So there will be no investment. But uh, imagine like mastermind groups, groups of five people, all of them want to be entrepreneur members. And they... In the beginning of their uh, accelerated program, they define a goal, what they want to achieve, and then they will be helping each other. So they will have regular meetings where they help each other, support each other to achieve those goals. And then in the end, we'll have a demo day. And this demo day, I will try to invite people from outside. I'll try to somehow use my connections here with the podcast to get uh, some uh, kind of established entrepreneurs to, let's say, judge. And maybe we'll give some prices. So it will be really fun. So I'm 
kind of working on that because I wanted to automate this process. As I told you in the last episode, it's important if I want the community to scale, to automate everything I can so that if more people join, they can just initiate their accelerator program and I don't need to be very much involved in that. So yeah, that's basically what I've been uh, working at. And uh, yeah, in the community, I see people engaging. I still see the, the the Slack channel, what I'm doing today, being one of the most used. The other channels are also used. The random coffees, I'm having some trouble there because some people, sometimes they are in this channel, but they ghost or they don't want to schedule coffees and they don't leave the channel. So some people already complained about that. So I need to think, okay, how can I fix this, you know? Also, the virtual office for the past week has been kind of inactive. Not a lot of people are using it. So again, it's always hard to get people at the same time in the office uh, to use it. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's all. I still don't have a lot of members and there's still a lot of things that I can do. And uh, some of the members use it and they hang out with each other. They meet each other. So it's kind of serving its purpose, but it's not still at its full potential so yeah that's uh, everything that has been happening in the community and uh, i still keep on fighting uh, the marketing fight you know like trying to get more people and for me that's been basically in the hackers in the hackers in the hackers like answering people's comments and trying to plug the podcast or the community and so far it's working great it's it's been the my biggest source or ch marketing channel. A lot of people are coming from indie hackers and those are my target users. So some of them will eventually convert and become um, wannabe entrepreneur members. Another interesting thing that is happening is on Twitter. Now, I think it's the third weekend in a row that I see that there are much more engagement during the weekends than during the weeks. And even this week, I did a tweet, a super simple tweet, which was, um, I noticed that um, more people engage with my tweets on weekends than during the week. That's only the, that's the tweet I did, but I did it on a Saturday. And yeah, again, a lot of people liked it. So I don't know why, but uh, definitely weekends are... It's, it's, it's weird because before this used to be the case, but now it is. And I'm growing my Twitter mostly on weekends because, again, when you get viral is when you get the most people, at least when you notice that there is a big increase. Before I close down this round of project updates, I just want to quickly refer change it. So my climate change app, a project that I haven't touched for the past months, but uh, I'm very passionate about. And uh, it was my first project when I started bootstrapping. I just want to say that even though I'm not working and not putting any folks on change it, it's crazy that I still have a lot of traffic coming to the website due to SEO. So there was one particular post that uh, speaks about the envir environmental impact of uh, lithium batteries. And actually, if you just search lithium batteries pollution, the first result will be our blog, Change It blog. And this is bringing tons of traffic. Just yesterday, I got 150 people coming to the website, which is absurd because it's, it's completely passive. People are always talking about the uh, passive income or pa passive revenue but for me i'm more interested in having a passive income source of users of new users and i wish i had this in the product that i could monetize for instance the wb space but i don't know this makes me happy because first of all i'm helping the world i'm teaching about the impact of uh, these lithium batteries and people can be more informed and maybe i can do something in the future so i just want to say that seo is something that takes time uh, when we first released this blog post for months I, we had a couple of people coming but nothing like this and it only got big up after maybe three four months it's, it's really crazy and now I, I don't need to do anything and i still keep on having a lot of traffic so for sure seo if you can somehow control it which i've i've studied a lot about seo and i've, I've tried to read a lot about it and i i still find it a little bit random i don't know how to control it somehow but if you do i have here the results and they are really really amazing so I just wanted to say this about change it and uh, that's it for the project updates today. Let's now get to the tips and tricks for bootstrappers of today's episode. 
And uh, I want to speak about NFTs again. I started speaking about that in the last episode. But as I told you, I have some friends visiting and they are completely nuts about NFTs. That's all they talk about. So it's impossible for me not to be curious about it and uh, not to learn as well from what they are doing. And I, I find a lot of resemblance with what we do as entrepreneurs. And I will tell you why. So... If you don't know what NFT is, you can just listen to my past episode where I try to explain again. I'm no expert. I'm just picking up from what I'm listening. But you can listen to the last episode. I tried to explain there. So, apparently, before you launch a new collection of NFTs, you need to find an artist, right? So, you need to find a designer, a digital artist, someone that has some nice art. What I've noticed is that Actually, people don't care too much about, about the art. They just care about the NFT and the speculation. But if you don't have a good artist or at least an artist that has some uh, noun or already has an audience, you probably won't go anywhere. And it's it's a little bit like a product hunt, right? So when you are launching your product, it really helps when you already have an audience, when people already know you. And then you need to start creating some buzz, some uh, interest around what you are about to launch. And the way they do this in uh, the NFT world is to s somehow being selective on the people that they bring to their, uh, let's say, inner circle. So they normally create a Discord channel or a Discord server. So Discord is the main communication medium in the NFT world. And they start bringing people to this Discord channel and they start creating the hype, creating the FOMO. They say, we have an amazing artist coming and this will be great. And it's, again, a little bit similar to, for instance, when a company is about to go public. I remember when I was working to Trivago and they were going public. That's kind of what they do. Before they do the initial selling of their stocks, they need to hype the market. They cannot hype too much because it's more regulated, the stock world. In NFTs, it's not regulated at all, so they can hype as much as they want. But uh, that's what they they want to do, and companies do the same, so that the first offering, a lot people will buy it for a big price. So the same with NFTs. They start doing this. But then, once you get to the channel, and that, that's the first thing you need to do, you need to, to get to the channel, which is extremely hard. And I can tell you that, for instance, uh, one, of, one of my friends, Friends, he told me that to get into uh, what is called an alpha channel, and the alpha channel is a channel where they give you some first-hand information about great NFTs that are coming and great uh, challenges that are happening and so on. The, to get into this alpha channel, they would, uh, on Twitter, write a riddle. Just write a riddle, and the first six people to decipher this riddle would get into the Discord channel. The riddles were normally simple. For instance, the code to get in the Discord channel would be the first letter of uh, the sentence, of each sentence of the tweet. So the tweet would have like five sentences and the first word of each sentence would be the code. But it's really hard because the moment you notice, you need to be always looking to your tweet. And the moment you notice, you need to be super fast. And there's people that are extremely fast. So, of course, he's a developer. He basically created a bot that was able to decipher this and uh, it was the first one to get in amazing I, I always love when people and developers create bots because i'm always fascinated about it so that's the first step then once you reach the discord channel you need to start interacting with people because discord gives you kind of promotions based on your interaction. So you need to interact with people. The more messages you send, the more Discord promotes your user. And then eventually some mods, some moderator of that Discord channel will pick you up and give you extra benefits or give you a higher role. And that's basically all they do. So my friend is always like basically sending messages to one another. And what it tells me is that it just writes sometimes bullshit. Like uh, someone says goodbye and it says goodbye or it tries to be helpful. But sometimes it just tries to write something. And I don't know, when I was seeing this, I kind of connected with what we also do on Twitter. Because to get promoted on Twitter, to get your tweets, your products, your profile to be seen, to be noticed, you need to engage a lot. And... Uh, 
I, I, I do that myself. Sometimes I just go through my wall and I see all the notifications or, or rather I see the, the other tweets actually, not the notifications. Notifications, I always try to answer them properly. But sometimes I just go through other tweets and I, I, I notice that I'm just writing uh, quote-unquote BS. I just say, hey, hello, or, uh, well, not hey, hello, but something that actually doesn't bring any real information but just brings some engagement. Is this correct? Should this be the way we get promoted in this world? Probably not, right? It's it's much better to create proper content. But somehow this works because this brings a lot of interaction to these platforms, to Discord, to Twitter, and that's what they sell to their to their advertisers, right? So when you show to someone that wants to advertise in your platform how many people engage, they'll be like, okay, I want to advertise there, even though maybe they are just not even paying attention or just 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 writing bullshit. So that's kind of what what's happening. And um, so my friend is always writing to these people, and eventually he will get promoted. And it seems that once you get promoted, you get certain advantages. For instance, you you are the first one to to know about a new selling, about a new NFT. You you get to be the first one to buy it, and of course, if you are the first one to buy it, you will buy it by a for a lower price. Then you can sell it for a higher price, and people are actually making a lot of money. One of my friends just told me that in two hours she she made um, two thousand dollars like this, just because she knew which one to buy, and she was able to sell it right away. So. Again, no one cares really about the art, which is really sad, but uh, people, it's kind of a game, you know, it's a game and the result or what you get is money, a lot of money. So I totally understand why so many people are so interested on NFTs and there's so much hype. Again, I'm pretty sure that this technology can really help, but the way it's being used, it's not going to be the way it will actually bring value to the world. Now it's just hype and people just... Yeah, that's how you sell your NFT. You create a lot of hype. It's a lot of marketing. It's the same as when we bootstrappers launch something on Product Hunt. Think about it. You create your product. Okay. Sometimes it can be something as simple as a list of uh, like an info product, something really simple, but the hype is the most important. So you create your product and you start advertising, you start getting pre-sales, you start saying, hey, this is our product, we are about to launch, you have an audience, people get super excited, and then you launch it on Product Hunt, you ask people to vote, and bam, that's it, you have a great launch. So that's a lot of the NFT world is in doing a lot of great launches and a lot of um, hype around it. And it seems to work. And it's easy for me to look at them and, and kind of criticize, like, what are they doing? Makes no sense. Come on, do something for the world. <laughs> but then I think about, okay, that's kind of what I also have to do to, to sell my my products. I need to do this kind of marketing. In, in these platforms, if you are doing marketing social media, you just need to engage, engage, engage. And uh, I, I see this happening. I, I don't know if this was actually a tip and trick for entrepreneurs or bootstrappers. It's just some interesting information. And I guess if you if you want to try to create your own NFT, that's what you can do. But I just found this interesting. And again, if you want to grow also your Twitter, one of especially in the beginning, one of the things you have to do is to engage a lot with a lot of of other users and then they will follow you back and uh, actually now i don't engage that much now i i basically only engage with people that uh, engage with my own tweets but sometimes it's just also go through the wall and there are some really interesting tweets as well and sometimes i generally want to engage and give my contribution sometimes i just want to engage to get somehow promoted and that's it. That's it for today's Wannabe Entrepreneur. As I told you, this coming Thursday, there'll be a great interview with Anna Bibikova. She has so much energy. She's a true inspiration for every entrepreneur. So make sure to listen to that episode. And uh, if you want to be part of the Wannabe Entrepreneur space, and uh, if you want to participate in the accelerator program that is about to start, make sure to join. It's $5 per month and you're also supporting this podcast besides that sharing this podcast with your friends entrepreneur friends it would really really help and if you find a quote or something interesting in this episode sharing it on twitter is also really really good also you can just buy me a coffee a one-time coffee the link 
All of this will be in the show notes of this episode. This was another wannabe entrepreneur. See you next time. So I realized that I'm actually addicted to coffee. Yeah.